hello students hi to everyone in this video we are going to see the pattern of mains examination and also the weightage to the history optional the purpose of this class is to give you proper idea about how mains exam is conducted how mains completely to the beginners approach so i am trying to give you complete overview of mains examination and once we get the mains examination pattern and we will see how optional papers are part of mains examination how many marks each paper is allocated and what is the total score of mains examination and we will see how much score last year topper scored and to our luck last year topper was from history optional only so we have reference for the history optional marks also so now first we will start with the pattern of upsc mains examination UPSC mains exam UPSC contains three stages civil service contains three stages exam first one is prelims this is qualifying nature you need not to worry about how much score you get in the prelims exam but definitely you should be able to cross the cutoff then only you are allowed to the mains examination then mains then third stage is generally we call interview but in the language of upsc and the language of upsc notification that is personality test so this is the three stage process now if we consider mains examination it has nine papers so those who are qualified for the mains they have to write nine papers and in the nine papers all the papers marks are not counted for the merit only seven papers are counted for the merit if we divide those who are qualifying nature and the papers who are counted for the merit again we can divide it into two parts of the mains examination but overall it has nine papers so two papers qualifying two papers are qualifying in nature and seven papers these seven papers are very very crucial but again two papers qualifying are also crucial nowadays because one paper is english another paper is indian language every student should pass these two papers also 
even though they are not for counting the total number of marks and for the rank purpose and whether you are qualified for the personality test or not is decided by seven papers but these seven papers are evaluated if you are qualified for these two papers so it is similar to prelims kind of thing just to get 25% of marks are required to cross this so these two papers now i will write one by one how many marks each paper contains so indian language this is for 300 marks this for 300 marks second one english again 300 marks so whatever the two papers which are qualifying in nature english and indian language they were given paper 300 marks but out of 300 you just need to cross 75 marks that means 25% of 25% is required to cross this that means 75 marks and again 25% of this 75 marks so if you score 75 in indian language this indian language will change according to the so this Twenty five percent is very much required, and once you cross this qualifying nature, then your papers are evaluated for this, and these seven papers are the most crucial, and we need to get as much score as possible to get best rank. So these are qualifying nature. First. and second now two are qualifying so this part is done so prelims done in mains two qualifying papers now in these seven papers history optional will come and personality test is separate altogether now come to the these the papers seven papers so i am writing paper 1 this paper 1 of these seven papers is essay first one is essay now you need to observe this here the marks are for 250 the paper is containing the questions for 250 marks here two qualify papers 300 marks 300 marks so be careful in understanding this 300 300 indian language and english you need to get 75 marks 25% these marks whether you get 75 or 175 you are pass these marks will not be counted in these seven papers but these seven papers are the deciding factor how much score you are going to get in the mains and how much you will get in the final list and what is the rank you are going to get so paper 1 is essay 250 next we can divide this also again into three sub parts these seven papers also we can subdivide into three parts first one is essay paper the second part is general studies gs and third one is optional 
So now you see. Earlier, before the present pattern, earlier students were asked to write two optional papers. So two optionals people have to choose and they have to write four papers from optional itself. But from 2013 onwards, this pattern changed. As a result, now there is only one optional. So now we are focusing on if we understand the weightage of optional in these seven papers, you will be better equipped how much attention you should give to the optional. That is the purpose and the crux of this video. So first, we are going to understand overall framework of mains examination. And we will see after this how much score last year first ranker got. First ranker, she has optional history only. So that's why we have ready-made reference how much score she got in essay and general studies and optional in personality test also. And overall, for how much score she got, she secured first rank. Essay, general studies, optional. So paper one, essay, 250. And now, this 250, there is no qualifying. You need to score as much as possible. And if you get very good score in essay, your score will boost in overall. Next one, general studies, paper one, that you consider as paper two. So again, you don't confuse here. Paper is two. Paper one is essay, paper two. Here, paper two is general studies, paper one. So essay, general studies, paper one is part of paper two. And this one, 250 marks. And again, 250 marks. So this is how marks are allocated. Now, paper three. Here, general studies, two. Again, 250. And paper So you have to see, paper 2, 3, 4, and paper 5. So this is exactly how UPSC mentions in notification. General Studies 1, General Studies 2, General Studies 3, and General Studies 4. So up to here, 5 papers are done. So I was saying total 7 papers, which are very important for counting for the merit. And here, paper one, essay, 250, 250, 250, 250, 250. So if you divide essay, 250, and general studies alone, 1,000. So this is 250. This is 1,000. So 1,000 marks for general studies. And one of the importance of history optional is in general studies one, that means paper two and general studies one, the first general studies paper is having the syllabus of art and culture, Indian history as well as old history. So those who have history optional, for them this paper two contains history, art and culture, geography, and society. So your history part will come in general studies, paper one. So that is how, in general studies also, history optional will help. Next, paper five. Paper six. Next one, paper seven. So paper six and paper seven, these are optional. Paper 1, in our condition, history, paper 1. And here, second one, optional, paper 2. So history, paper 1, and history, paper 2. 
here 250 again 250 so if you see here all these are counted for the merit so total what is the score 1750 so these 1750 is the marks total marks and out of this you need to score to qualify for the personality test we will see how much first ranker second ranker third fourth up to fifth we will see how much they scored in mains examination and how much they scored in personality test as first ranker is from history optional so we have a reference of history optional marks also personality test and mains so essay general studies optional 1000 500 1500 less 250 1750 and this is the score and now the third stage is personality test that is for 275 marks so you need to see in mains we have qualifying nature papers they are for 300 marks So these are 300, 300, but you need to just score 75, 75 to clear. Done. And here, 1750, you should score as much as possible to get the first rank. And after that, your score in these seven papers will be added to the personality test score. So this is how to get the final list, final rank. Now let us see how much score Last year, up to five ranks, we will see what is first ranker score, second ranker, third and fourth and fifth rankers. So I am giving this list so that you will have reference. Now you see this. Rankers score. First ranker. So if I write rank, rank number one, ranker, first ranker secured, mains nine thirty two. So this was the score out of 1750 out of 1750 932 and personality test out of 275 173 so out of 275 so if i write here out of 1750 and this is out of 275 so now you see here the purpose of giving this table is also to give you some idea about how optional score will ensure you good success in mains paper or in the overall selection itself. So this is the purpose of this to have good idea about how optionals are having what kind of weightage optional papers are having in the mains examination. So total So if you add 932 mains score as well as personality test score. So this 932 is these seven papers. So are you understanding? So these seven papers, she got 932. Because these will not be counted, whatever may be the marks. So in these seven papers, 932. And personality test, she secured 173. So total, total 11.05, total 11.05.
So if you count approximately the percentage is total out of 20, 25. So here, 1750 plus 275, this is 20, 25. So out of 20, 25 marks, 1105 is the first. That means around 54. 0.5%. So this shows how difficult civil service examination is also. So if you score 55% of your exam score, then you are the topper. So every year, almost around this range only. So between 50 to 60 between only, you will get the first rankers. So if you score 60% in optional, this becomes easy. So even though if you get 50% in other papers, but you should score at least minimum 60% in optional paper. Now we will see that also. And in the second rank, when it comes to seven, mains, 871, 179,000, 15. Third ranker, 858, 187, 1045. One more difference, one more observation you can identify here. Between first rank and the second rank, you will find huge margin. 1105, 1050. That means 55 marks margin. But you observe second, third, fourth, fifth, you will identify the difference. Fourth one, 860. So 860, 858, 871, 930. So you see the difference you are going to see in the mains. And here, fourth ranker, 179 and total score is 1039. You see here, second and third, only five marks difference. 45, 39, six marks difference. Fifth, 871, and 165, and 1036. So, 1036. Again, three marks, just a three marks difference, six marks difference, five marks difference, but 55 marks difference. You see where this score difference, huge margin is there in mains examination. Here, 870, 930. 870, 930 means 61. Here itself, 61. So that is the main difference. But you observe, when it comes to personality test, 173, 179, six marks. So here, in mains itself, you have 61 marks margin. So this 61 margin in mains. So 61 marks in mains itself. And you see this difference hugely make huge difference between ranks. And now, first ranker is having history optional. So we have history optional scores also. Now let us see first ranker's score. First ranker. She secured more than 300 marks in history optional. So let us see how much score she got. So if you take yes, say. Yes, say. Paper 1, 132 out of 250. These are all for 250, 132. 
and GS1, 119, GS2, 128, GS3, 108, GS4, 139, Up to here, and now history. Paper one is one fifty. History paper two one fifty six. So now our attention here is history paper one and history paper two. 150, 156. So 306 in optionals itself and remaining here around 600 marks. So total 932. So total 932. And personality test 173, total 1100 plus. So observe here. 150, 156, 300 out of 500. So out of 500, 306 means it is more than 60%. So 60% of 500 means 300 more than 60 percent. So if you ensure 60 percent in your optional, now you see, you have seen in mains margin also, that mains margin decides hugely even when it comes to the rank. Here from second, third, fourth rank, you'll see each and every mark matters in few, five, six, in 10 marks difference. Now you see in 15 marks, four ranks, but between first and second, almost 60, 50, 55 score, 55. So this is the most crucial part when it comes to the optional. If you score very good score in his history or any optional, their rank is going to be very, they're going to be at the top level. So history paper one and history paper two, 150, 156. So more than 300 is very much possible when it comes to history, optional. People are there who scored 300 plus. And you see in terms of total score, essay, general studies, optional, 250, 250. And you compare how much first ranker got in each and every paper. And one more observation here, you can see when it comes to the first ranker, compare 130, 11, 120, 100, 139. You observe this, of all the above papers, the score of history is high. So in this paper 150, 150 so above 150 you will find in two papers, Rest of, the peop rest of the place around 130, 139, so around 140 maximum. But here, 150 touched. So this shows history optional is very crucial. Now, from now onwards, I focus on history optional. Up to here, it is for everyone, whether it is history optional or any other optional. The purpose of this video up to here is to explain you very clearly the weightage of history optional or weightage of any optional when it comes to scoring very good scores in mains examination. And if you get very good score in history optional, your rank is going to be improved a lot. Now let us come to the history paper one. What is history paper one and what is history paper two? How much a score is allocated for different parts? And we will see in detail about this. So now you see, history, optional, 300 plus is very much possible. What we need to learn from this? 300 plus is very much possible. And 
comparing with all the other papers, you have to get good score in optionals. And once you are having 300 plus scores, then you will be very much safe when it comes to the final ranking. Now, we are moving to what is history paper one and paper two contains. History, paper one. And paper two is also almost similar. But when it comes to history optional, we have map. That is why we have to separately deal with the paper one and separately with paper two. And total, now, there are total in each paper, both paper one and paper two, you have to write five questions. But you will be given choice. Eight questions will be given, and you have to write five. But it is not like all eight will be given, and you can choose any five of your choice. Again, UPSC has given some kind of restrictions. So all eight will not be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And UPSC is not saying that you write any five out of these eight. No. Again, UPSC has given certain restrictions. We have to follow it. Otherwise, if you take all the first five questions, your only three questions will be counted. Remaining questions will not be counted. So that is going to be very much danger. So that is why it should be properly understood how, what questions should be selected. Out of eight also, there are certain instructions. You have to follow them. Then only you have to understand that. Now, here, total questions, eight. So eight questions. Again, every question will contain some subsections also, sub questions also. So total questions, eight, 250 marks. So 250 marks. So total number of marks, 250. And for these 250 marks, eight questions will be given. These eight questions are divided into two sections. Here, section A. Section A contains four questions. Next one, section B. Section B contains four questions. In section A, so these eight questions, they are divided into two sections. Section A, first question, second question, third question, and fourth questions. So four questions from section A. And here also, four, fifth question, sixth question, seventh question, eighth question. So now you see, out of these eight questions, you cannot pick up randomly five, and you cannot write the answers. UPSC clearly has given instructions. Two sections will be given, section A and section B. And out of it, again, it makes question number one compulsory. Question number one compulsory, you have to write. If you don't write it, your marks will not be counted. So you, are, you will lose the score. And question number fifth, compulsory. So follow the instructions very, very carefully here. Eight questions. Section A, four questions will be given. Section B, four questions. Out of eight, first one, compulsory. Fifth one, 
compulsory that means first question from section a first question from section b are compulsory and totally upsc is asking us to write five questions in total five questions in total because each question is of 50 marks so 50 marks 50 marks so each question 50 marks into five questions total 250 marks the paper is for 250 marks you have to select five questions every question carries 50 marks 5 into 50 250 and out of it again section a 4 section b 4 question number 1 compulsory question number 5 compulsory that means here 50 marks compulsory 50 marks compulsory so 50 50 compulsory 100 marks done remaining three questions are there once again these three questions also you cannot randomly pick these three if you are not comfortable here you cannot select all the three here if you are not comfortable here you cannot select all the three here so upsc once again gives one more instruction by saying that out of these three also you have to pick up minimum one so this is very 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 crucial part because if we don't understand this sometimes we write all the anyway one and five are compulsory now we need three more questions and if you are comfortable if you are very well read because in paper 1 this section a now we are talking about history paper 1 when it comes to paper 1 this is from ancient india and this is from medieval india so that we will see in detail in the next video and if you read very well about ancient india if you are not comfortable in medieval india you cannot skip these three questions all together and you cannot write all the four questions from ancient and only one question from medieval india and you cannot expect score because it is saying out of these three maximum you can write two only because it is saying one other one compulsory again one is compulsory out of these three one is again compulsory out of these three one is again compulsory that means in each section minimum two compulsory out of this again you see upsc is giving these many restrictions and these many instructions that's why we should be very alert in handling this mains examination it has given eight we need to write five only so outward appearance it appears like upsc has given us choice of only five so that means three questions we can leave but upsc is not giving that free ride again it is restricting us to certain limit so our freedom is limited to certain level minimum 2 from section a minimum 2 section b and that remaining one question you can choose if you want if you are comfortable with that fifth question here you can choose that or if you are comfortable in section a that fifth question you can select so this is what minimum two questions from section a and section b should be selected this is paper 1 paper 2 also same instruction again paper 2 have a same section a and section b from section a first question compulsory and section b fifth question is compulsory remaining things minimum one you have to select minimum one the fifth one is so that means you can write maximum 3 here so minimum 2 minimum 2 definitely 2 2 you are going to select so out of fifth fifth compulsory out of 6 7 8 you have to select either 1 or 2 if you select two questions here then 2 3 4 you have to select only one then only all five questions so this is what with respect to choice with respect to taking the questions and writing it and now 
for every 50 marks, so 300 score means, now you see, 150, 250, 50% 50 is 125. First ranker got 150. 150 means 60%. So here, you should get 60% of marks in these sections, in every question. Now, in paper one, question number one. In paper one, question number one, in our history optional, this is map, and the map, it contains one, two, three, and so on, up to 20 sites will be given. So site number one, site number 20. And UPSC gives answer sheet, in this answer sheet, it gives, it says Paleolithic site, Neolithic site, Megalithic site are important temple site. So it will ask anything, temple site or important trade center, important Paleolithic center. Then it will give some space. And in this space, you have to write 30 words. 30 words. Each marking, this question is for fifty marks, and these fifty marks are divided into twenty site markings. That means twenty sites, each site carries two point five marks. That means fifty marks for twenty sites. If you identify, you will be given map also in the question paper. That map contains like one, two, three, like this. Suppose it says it will say one. Here in the question paper, it says important. Harappan site or pre Harappan site, Mesolithic site. Here it will give some two, and here two, Mesolithic site. So in question paper, it will be given like this. In question paper, map will be marked like this. Here, suppose if two, Mesolithic site, here also it is printed Mesolithic site. Then what you have to do? You have to identify it somewhere in Belan Valley Mesolithic site. Whatever is answer to that, you write that Mesolithic site name and 30 words. If you identify the map correctly, you will be given one mark. Out of this 2.5, one mark if you identify right one. And these 30 words, 1.5. So that 2.5. In no question, if you write even full answer, best answer also will be given 60%, but 2.5 out of 2.5, that means 100% score. It appears very small, but the small additions going to make huge difference when it comes to map in history optional. Even you have the potential up to reach 35 to 40 marks. Out of 50, out of 50, in rest, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on, up to eight. If you get 30, that is how much score? 60%. But only map having the possibility to reach up to 40. So if you score 40 out of 50, that means 80%. So this is where paper one, either if you properly prepared map, you will get 80% score in the question number one itself. If you do not prepare properly, and if you are confused with the map markings, then again, it may go down to 
either 60% or 50% also 25 or 20 marks we have to history optional students should fetch more score in map itself it's a very high scoring area next one so this is our map question number 1 this is compulsory when it comes to paper 1 section a now when it comes to question number 2 question number 2 will contain a b c again subsection upsc will not give you one question all 50 marks all a b c combinedly will have 50 marks and again upsc gives clear instructions question number a contains 20 that question is for 20 marks b 15 marks and 15 marks this may change this division may change it can become 20 20 10 so 20 20 40 plus 10 50 20 15 15 so it can change it is up to UPSC so always be careful UPSC will give paper question answer booklet question number is printed and sufficient space will be given according to the number of marks allocated for that particular part 20 marks means more space will be given and 15 marker means less space than 20 marker 10 markers means even less than that so question number two so according to last year 2022 in paper one Twenty twenty two paper one question number two twenty fifteen fifteen. So now if you if you want to score sixty percent, every question matters. Out of twenty twelve marks you should score for sixty percent. Out of fifteen nine and nine, so total thirty marks. So out of 50 marks if you score 30 60 percent so if you add all 250 that's why if you get less score in the theory part if you have 80 percent score in map then it will give you some buffer so that's why map is very very crucial because sometimes we may not be able to write good quality answers for each and everything generally 40 to 45 percent everyone will get it's like 10 marks 7 marks 7 marks something like that if you add 10 7 7 24 so out of 50 so 22 to 25 if you write if you fill the space with a sufficient preparation you will score but these five from 25 to 30 is the major challenge and again if you see from individual question perspective you hardly need one mark one and a half mark 0.5 mark extra you may reach up to 10 7 7 if you increase two marks plus two plus two plus two so if you see from each and individual question perspective whatever effort you are making you just need those additional two marks so these two marks will fetch you if you write properly and with some additional like in history we need more evidence evidence in the form of different geographical places different uh, historians if it is relevant archaeologists if it is relevant to the question and if map is required drawing a map all these extra things will give you that one mark two mark extra content definitely will give that's why 250 260 marks out of 500 in history optional you will score with a decent preparation if you do not mess up with map 250 260 265 you will score but from 265 to 300 310 it requires but if in the question paper is difficult if you are still making 
290, 300 also. If scaling is rare, because scaling is a, a tool used by UPSC to ensure all the optionals get almost same level of scores. If difficult paper in history with scaling, it may go up to 330 also. So it may go T25 beyond also. That we cannot say. When it comes to scaling, we cannot exactly say how much score you will get. But it is in our hand to score up to 55 to 60 percent to score is very much there in our hand. So up to 310, 320, 325, it is there in our hand itself. So even if you score 300, you can see history optional to the 300 score, first rank. So if you are good in other papers, also GS and SA paper. So same is the condition here. Now, question number two. Question number three also. A, B, C, same, 20, 15, 15. So likewise, question number four also, A, B, C. All four questions, you have to select map is compulsory. Out of these remaining, question number two, three, four, maximum you can select two, but minimum you have to select one. Either two, three, four, one definitely you have to write, and one more is your choice. If you are comfortable in two questions, you can select two itself here. Next one, come to the section B. When it comes to section B, now the pattern of this section B is same for paper two also. Here it contains question number five, a, B, C, D, E. Five questions. So this is same when it comes to section B. This is same. And when it comes to paper 2, here also section A and section B, same thing, first compulsory. Fifth, compulsory. So when it comes to paper two, part A, section A and section B contains question number one and five compulsory, like in case of paper one. This compulsory and this compulsory contains five questions like this. That means in paper two, section A, it contains question number one, A, B, C, D, E, like this. Only in paper one, map will come. In paper two, similar to section B in paper one. So this is pattern is same. Now when it comes to section B compulsory, here this is for 150 words. So when it comes to optional, only in two places we have number, words are given. Number of words. One, when it comes to map, 30 words. And when it comes to section, this question number one in paper two and question number five in paper two, and section B, question number five in paper one, specifically mention 150 words. So 150 words, 150 words, 150 words, 150 words. 10 marks, 10 marks. So 10 marks, 10, 10. Total, 50 marks. So out of 10, if you want to score 60%, you should get six marks. So six marks in each and every question paper. This one. Now when it comes to question number six, A, B, C. Now you see 15, 15, 20. So it can change. That's why these numbers may change, 15, 15, 20 are 20, 15, 15, are 20, 20, 10. This may change. So just you have, you observe. It may change every year. It's, there is no guarantee that similar pattern will come. But question number one, map, that is fixed. And question number five, five questions fixed. In this pattern only, it will come. So same is the case. Question number seven, A, B, C. Question number eight, A, B, C. 50 marks and 50 marks. 
Again, you have to select. Fifth is compulsory. No choice in that. Definitely, you have to write. And out of these three, one is compulsory. You can select any of these three. If you write here three questions, out of these, if you write two questions in paper section A, then you can write only one question out of this. So that's why section A. Now, when it comes to paper two, same is the case. Section A, section B, one and five compulsory. Two, three, four. Out of these three questions, one compulsory. The additional. The other one, fifth is your choice. Sixth, seventh, eighth. One compulsory. So one and one more compulsory. Fifth plus one compulsory. And if you select the third question from here, section B contains only, you need not write the other one. So if you write three questions here, you will write three. If you write two questions here, you, have, you can write three questions. So this is how UPSC clearly gives instruction how many questions you should attempt, section A and section B, and paper one and paper two. Marks are allocated properly proper space is given, wherever number of words are there, number of words are specifically mentioned. You need not to worry about it at all. Just you need to observe in the examination hall what instruction is given. Now broadly, section A, section B, and paper one, paper two. When it comes to paper one, this section A, this is about ancient India. And when it comes to section B, this is early medieval and medieval India. Ancient India and medieval India, paper one. When it comes to paper two, again, section A and section B, this is modern India, and this is modern old. Ancient India, medieval India, modern India, modern world. So old history is also part of our syllabus. This is how, this is for 250, this is for 250. Total 500 marks out of 500. 300 score is very much possible. Even first rank is also possible with history optional. So there is a misconception that history will not give you good score, but it has given first rank itself. So it all depends on the student and each and every part of the syllabus. Syllabus is a little bit lengthy, no doubt in it. But once you systematically do it, then no aspect of current affairs here. Once you are systematically done, your preparation of history optional is done once for all. So initially, it will take some time to touch each and every aspect which is given in the notification. But once you write minimum points for each and every topic, then your preparation is done once for all. So you can easily track whether you have done 50%, 60%, or 100% of the syllabus is covered or not. But you can easily measure, because detailed way UPSC has given the syllabus. So these are the parts. This is the questions. And so the purpose of this class is to give you an idea about how UPSC mains is designed and how many papers are there? Total nine papers are there in mains. Two are qualifying nature. Marks will not be counted for the merit. Seven papers, they are counted for the merit. Essay, GS, and optional. So essay, one paper. GS, four papers. Optional, two papers. Total seven papers. These are counted for the merit. If you get good score there, and you will be allowed to personality test, 
your personality score plus mains score will be added to get to give you the final rank so this is how different uh, allocation of the marks so paper 1 how it contains 250 250 like this and personality test and these are the different marks secured by top 5 rankers in 20 2022 or 2020 so last year you can say so now this year still continuing so last year these are the toppers scores so this is first ranker was having history optional only that's why we are lucky to have score from the first ranker itself in history 150 156 so this is how questions are coming uh, scores are given this is how questions are coming section a section b this is how the instructions from UPSC, how you have to select the questions. You should be very much clear about this before starting UPSC preparation of history optional. So this will help you in understanding what is the weightage and how much score is possible in history optional and broadly how much, how many parts are there and how you have to select the questions when it comes to the mains examination. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will meet in the next class with other topic. Thank you.